2006, 11 years ago, D60 schools underwent a name change when it became Pueblo City Schools. So they weren't always called Pueblo City Schools. Before 2006, Pueblo City Schools was not called Pueblo City Schools. So I guess they just called it D60, District 60. So technically speaking, Joyce fucking Bales never worked at Pueblo City Schools. She worked for D60, not Pueblo City Schools. These are the superintendents who worked for Pueblo City Schools. You had Alabama Covington, you had Kathy West, you had Colorado Springs Margarita Lopez, and you had Florida Jones, and right now, Charlotte Macaluso. So those are the only five superintendents, technically, those are the only five superintendents, technically, that worked for Pueblo City Schools. Alabama Covington, Kathy West, Colorado Springs Margarita Lopez, and Florida Jones, and Charlotte Macaluso. But not Tennessee Joyce. No, 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 not Tennessee Joyce. That fucking authoritarian, fascist, totalitarian, dictator, piece of shit. On March 4th, 1946, Pueblo School Districts 1 and 20 were consolidated into Pueblo School District 60. That was March 4th, 1946. One year after the greatest generation crushed Nazism. That's how Hitler rose to power, because fascism wasn't nipped in the bud. All the opposition groups to Hitler, nobody opposed Hitler. So once the United States beat and crushed Hitler, then we said, well, why do we have two school districts? Why is there District 20 and why is there District 1? Let's be one. Let's unite, Pueblo. Let's unite. So that's when District 40 was created in 1946. So it's only been, what, 50, 60, 70 years that we've had D District 60? So D60 isn't inevitable. D60 hasn't always been in existence. There's actually some people that's trying to crush the 1954 City Charter Constitution, the charter that dictates no more charter conventions. They're gutting the charter to where never again will we ever have a fucking charter convention. They are fucking the people of Pueblo so goddamned hard and nobody's talking about it. Everybody says, ugh, oh, I don't like it. And then that's it. That's the extent of their analysis because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And if you think, like, maybe they might have tricked you, like, you know what? A nice, good, strong mayor, good daddy just to give us a big old hug. He's rough but firm. You know, he loves, but he's, it's a tough love. Yeah, maybe the idea might not be a bad idea, but how these people have put it together, this is the establishment. This is the establishment who formed a brand new government behind closed doors, and then they're unveiling it to you. So this is a, basically not a charter convention. This is a brand new charter without a charter convention, without the people being invited, without anybody coming uh, and being asked, what would you like to see in a brand new charter? They just went ahead and decided all those things for you. We already have a strong chief executive, but they want to make it stronger. They want to take the city council, the power away from the city council. Make sure the city council has no decisions when it comes to hiring and firing. Make sure they have no say-so when it comes to the budget. And now they can't fire the chief executive. If Sam Azad became mayor, now we got Sam Azad as our mayor for five fucking years. Well, uh, Sam Azad's been our mayor, our chief executive, for five fucking years. The only difference is we could fire him today. We can fire him right now. I'm not for sure if he's under contract. If he is under contract, then, I mean, that's, that's stupidity on the fucking board, you know, part, but that's their term, right? If you had a two-year contract, then that's a two-year term. But without a contract, we can fire Sam Azad in 30 days. We can fire Sam Azad with the majority vote in 30 days, and that's it. That's all it takes. Under the strange mayor, and it's going to be a fucking strange mayor, it's going to be a strange mayor because they're not doing the majority vote. They're doing a one-off, one runoff election. Just one? What if it takes two runoff elections or three? How many runoff elections are we going to have until... So that's when D60 was formed on March 4th, 1946. Pueblo's first school building was a one-room adobe hut built near the Fountain River around 1862. So right at the onset of the Civil War, 1862... The first school building was a one-room adobe hut. One-room adobe hut. I guess the Native Americans, they've been educating themselves for quite some time without a school building. 
Alright, so here we have old Buckeye Keating. So John F. Keating. John F. Keating was the superintendent of Pueblo. So John fucking Keating. John fucking Keating was the superintendent of Pueblo schools in 1918. John F. Keating was the superintendent. This asshole was the mind fear, the authoritarian monarch, the autocrat. His sole mission in life was to go around telling your kids how they should live, what they should think, what they should do. To shut the fuck up and sit down and do as he says. John F. Keating came from Ohio. John F. Keating was a Methodist. John F. Keating was an outsider. He was an outsider from Ohio, coming in here, wanting to tell Pueblo City how to run their lives. A Methodist is a member of a Christian Protestant denomination originating in the 18th century evangelistic movement of Charles and John Wesley and George Whitefield. So John fucking Keating, John F. Keating, this Methodist, this Buckeye, where'd his mouth even go? I don't even know where John F. Keating's mouth went. Hey, John F. Keating, yo Keating, Keating, oh I hate that, Keating, could you imagine having to be like, hey Superintendent Keating. Anyways, hey, you Superintendent Keating, I think your mustache swallowed your mouth. It's gone. Seriously, could you imagine having to do a single fucking thing this fucking Buckeye, asshole, Nazi despot ordered you to do? Oh, you came out of Ohio. Oh, a bunch of other fucking schools told you how to act and how to be. Have you lived life? Have you actually started your own business? Have you ever been an entrepreneur? You ever had a real job where you actually had to go to a factory and, you know, put together stuff and on, on the assembly line? You ever done a real job or you always been in school? So you've been, you know, in school they've been telling you a bunch of shit and then you're just repeating all that shit that they told you? Is anybody getting anything done? John F. Keating did not add to the gross national product. He did not add to the gross domestic product. What was John F. Keating's product? What did he give to the world? All he did was bring fascism. He brought fascism into Pueblo City. This is 1918. This is during World War I. Was he sitting there telling the kids to question the war? No, of course not. Eugene Debs questioned the war, and he went to jail. Oh, Buckeye Keating, old oh, Buckeye Keating, he didn't give a shit. Oh, Keating, Keating thought that your kids need a beating if they thought of retreating. Keating was all about the war. Keating wanted everybody to go to war and battle and salute and this is during the tenure of Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson who said that the birth of a nation was like writing history with lightning. Woodrow Wilson, this guy invaded Mexico. He started the occupation in Haiti. He went into World War I. Lots of people died for World War I. Why the fuck were we in World War I? And then the oppression that was put on Germany after World War I, Britain wasn't any better, and they had to do with Serbia. And we bombed Serbia last decade. That's what World War I was, the bombing of Serbia, the taking of Serbia, the destruction of Serbia. But American students aren't even taught that now. These damn social study teachers, they don't tell the truth. They don't want to say anything controversial. It's okay to get behind a war president. It's okay to send a bunch of American men out to die for no fucking reason. World War I did not have to happen. We did not have to jump into World War I. Let Europe handle their own affairs. World War I had to do with they were jealous. Woodrow Wilson was jealous of the Germans because the Germans were very advanced in science and technology and education. So they were scared of Germany. That's no reason to attack somebody. It's like, hey, there's a powerful person right there. Let's attack them. Why? Well, their power scares me. Oh, okay. So Keating's response to authority would be fleeting. Keating would not have taught to question authority. Keating would not have taught the democratic principles. He wouldn't teach how to stand up, speak up, how to become... Don Keating was an oppressor, and we should be making our children stronger. Stronger in mind, body, spirit, so that they understand the, and, you know, so they can understand the awesome responsibility that's been put upon them. They are the ones entrusted to carry on the democracy for each and every decade, for the next generation. They're going to run their society, and then their children are going to run there. So it's going to go on and on forever. So if we can teach our children how to stand up and be strong, I mean, all these fucking gangbangers out here and shit, so there's all this bullshit that's going on out here, and you're sitting there telling the kids to shut up and sit down, be obedient? You think being obedient with a bunch of fucking gangbangers and no damn bread? 
on the table, having no money, having no Christmas presents. The problem is tyranny. The problem is John F. Keating. Keating comes in, tells everybody to bow down, do as they're told, and then their lives are fucked for the rest of their lives. The ones who were able to rebel enough to get a sense of strength, to get a sense of their own identity and character, but not too much to where polite society didn't totally reject them. Because of Keating's tyranny, people had to play all these political games because of Keating's tyranny. Who the fuck is Keating? I have to send my kid to Keating? I gotta send my kid to this asshole's fucking schoolhouse. This buck guy. I'm an atheist. So he's a Methodist. Not just a Christian, not just a Catholic. He's a very specific denomination. So not just a Protestant, but a Methodist Protestant. Will he impose not only his political views, but his religious views upon my kids too? Is he sitting there making them say the pledge, and they have to say under God real loud, even though they don't believe it? So yeah, if John F. Keating was to ever order me to do my homework, well, you want me to do my homework? Um, how about this, John Keating? Why don't you suck my dick? No, no, no. I mean, you're going to order me to do something, so I'm giving you an order. You want me to go do a bunch of calculus when I don't even know if I have food at the house? I don't, there's no jobs? Crime is running rampant? And you want me to do a bunch of fucking calculus while you live in your safe, plush house? While John Keating's got a fat paycheck? John Keating's got power and money. John Keating is the problem. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer because of John Keating's. Instead of listening to John Keating, instead of listening to John Keating, you should be John Keating and you should out-compete him and put your application in and then become the superintendent. John Keating was probably applying to superintendent jobs all over the place. All these fucking superintendents did that. That's what Joyce fucking Bell did. She was applying to be the superintendent of Lexington, Kentucky, on D60's dime. We paid for Joyce fucking Bells to go to Lexington, Kentucky, so she can apply for a job to be a superintendent closer to her family. Why do we do that? We want somebody that's going to stick it out here. We're going to sit there and what, pretend that she gives a shit about our children? Why would she give a shit? She's got no reason to give a shit about our kids. These damn capitalists, these careerists, they're sitting there applying for other jobs as they're doing the current job of their superintendent. Why don't you stick with the district? If you see long-term vision, if all your shit, if you're installing institutions, if you're creating institutions for the, our society, for our children and our children's children, then you need to work, play, work, play, die, work, play, born, work, raise your kids, stay here. You need to live and play and die here. You're going to be my superintendent or my uh, chief of police or county or sheriff or whatever. You need to live here. If you don't live here, get the fuck out. What the fuck? Oh, yeah, John F. Keating, he's from Ohio. Why the fuck do I need to listen to this Methodist Buckeye? What the fuck is this Methodist Buckeye? How's he going to help me? Is, does he know how to plow up a field? Is he going to help me plow up a field? Is he going to help me acquire the tools and equipment that I need to plow up a field? And then to get the seeds? And then to harvest it? And then to sell all that product? Is he going to help me do any of that? Is he going to help me succeed and survive? Or is he just an asshole that when you go to the school, he tells you to shut up, sit down, and listen to his stupid ass as if that dumb asshole, as if he fucking knows it all. John F. Keating don't know it all. All right, so here's a quote from Rudolf Eichstein, probably my favorite educational theorist of all time. Rudolf Eichstein is a German refugee of Hitler's Germany. And he looked at Hitler's Germany and he's like, what went wrong? How did we lose our country? How did we lose our democracy? What happened in Germany that allowed this piece of shit Hitler to rise up, that allowed this piece of shit to rise up and then made all these supposedly good Christian, regular, average citizens do some heinous shit to innocent people. How did he do that? How did Hitler do that? So Rudolf Eichstein, he's a refugee from Hitler's Germany, and he's warning the rest of us how, especially America, we're the great bastion of hope and freedom for the world. So he's sitting there talking to America. Here's what we did wrong. What's courageous, what's not courageous? So here we go. It is courageous to defend the liberty of every member of the nation. It is courageous to destroy all remainders of inequality between the different groups in our nation. It is courageous and dangerous to work on the skyscrapers, on the great bridges, and to build great dams. It is courageous to decide independently to think and to act as a free man. 
It is not courageous to follow a leader blindly like a small child. It is not courageous to beat and to torment helpless people. We have real ideals for our children. It is right to love, to trust, and to imitate men like the American officer who recently brought medicine on an airplane to the population of Chile after the earthquake. What he did was more courageous and better than to drop bombs on poor, helpless Ethiopians. It is more courageous to risk one's life exploring the South Pole and to fight alone against nature than to destroy the churches of defenseless and peaceful people. It is more courageous and better to fight for the freedom of slaves than to burn scientific books and to close scientific institutions. The lives of our great inventors, explorers, writers are much more thrilling than the life of a watchdog in a concentration camp. Our children should understand that democracy means also, if necessary, to defend with all means our freedom and that a free and prepared nation can't be defeated. So every May 20th from uh, 2006 till the end of time, the city of Pueblo and the county of Pueblo is supposed to celebrate Joyce Bales Day, Joyce F. Bales Day. So here is the legislation. Ready? Whereas it is a special honor to recognize Dr. Joyce Bales for having demonstrated exceptional talent, leadership, character, pride, and vision over the years through her work with Pueblo School District Number 60 and the entire Pueblo community and Whereas, throughout her career in Pueblo, Joyce has dedicated herself to quality educational service to our youth, her staff, and the citizens of Pueblo, and she has done so with great passion, exceptional pride, and great heart. Her life reflects the efforts and accomplishments of a compassionate, talented, and enthusiastic individual who continually strives to meet her goals and to do what's in the best interest of children. She steadfastly believes that all children can learn, and her legacy for closing the education gap for all students will be her lasting testament. And whereas, it is also befitting to acknowledge that Joyce has been recognized by President Bush, Secretaries of Education, Spellings and Page, Miss Lynn Cheney, whoa, Ms. Lynn Cheney and Colorado Governor Bill Owens for her contributions to Pueblo. Now, therefore, we, the City of uh, the City Council, the City of Pueblo, Colorado, and the Board of County Commissioners, by the authority vested in us, do hereby officially proclaim Saturday, May 20th, 2006, as Dr. Joyce Bales Day in the city and County of Pueblo, Colorado, encourage the citizens and encourage the citizens of this community to join us in acknowledging her tremendous service to Pueblo School District Number 16, her deep commitment to and genuine involvement with the youth of Pueblo, in witness whereof we have hereunto set our hands and caused the seals of the city and County of Pueblo, Colorado, to be affixed this 24th day of May 2006. Michael A. Ochiato, the President of the City Council, and Matt J. Puellen, Chair of the Board of County Commissioners. So two weird things. May 20th is when they said that that was Dr. Joyce Bales Day, but then they said 24th. May 24th, they said four days ago was Joyce Bales Day, and then the actual language did say May 20th, 2006. So four days ago was Joyce Bell's date. Nobody celebrated. Nobody did anything for it, but it happened, right? That's such a tricky celebration, right? Hey, guess what? We're going to...